Thoughts and intentions simply arise in the mind. What else could they do? Now, some of you might think this sounds very depressing. Okay. This, it seems to take something away from us. It does. It takes away an egocentric view of life. But I think this can be tremendously liberating. Okay. We are not truly separate. We are linked to each other and to our past and to history. We are part of a system, and therefore what, what we do matters. You, you can't take credit for your talents, but it matters that you use them. You can't really be blamed for your weaknesses, but it matters that you correct them. So, so pride and shame don't make a lot of sense in the final analysis. But they weren't much fun anyway. <laughs> you know, they, they, these are isolating emotions. What does make sense is a commitment to well-being and to, to improving your life and the lives of others. Love and compassion make sense. And of course, nothing that I've said reduces the value of political freedom or, or social freedom. I mean, having a gun to your head is still a problem worth rectifying wherever intentions come from. But the idea that we as conscious beings are deeply responsible for the character of our own minds is just impossible to map onto reality. And if we want to be guided by reality, rather than by the, 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 the fantasy life of our ancestors, I think our views on this topic have to change. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.